the first beverage company in North America to have its own recycling plant that operates within the circular economy. Tell me a little bit more about how you've been able to achieve that. I think first, it's entrepreneurial spirit. Growing up with my parents who started the business, they always had something going on. They had the fish farm or a chicken farm. We um, made fish tanks and did landscaping. So they, they're definitely entrepreneurial. From there, we knew we had the Ontario Blue Box system. So in a province where you have a really robust collection system, you can rely on those materials to, to build your business. So I think that really helped us. And lastly, I would say as a family company, we can make decisions that aren't just bottom line based. We think about the three piece. Um, so you've got planet, people, and purpose. So how do we get to a point where we can think about all those things, not just the financials? One of the most important themes we hear on the sustainability front is the term circular economy. What does circular economy mean in terms of the work that you do at Ice River Sustainable Solutions? So the circular economy is exactly what it sounds like. We're getting away from that linear production and consumption of products and thinking about how do we make a bottled water circular. And so how we've done that is we put our water out into the market, the consumer buys it and consumes it, it goes into the curbside collection system or the blue box. We buy that material back and we turn it right back into itself again. So when we started this business in 1995, uh, we were just producing our water and putting it into the market. And in 2007, we started to think about our plastic footprint and how, how we could start reducing that. And we tried other products. We moved into a carton. We tried a compostable plastic. And neither of those products worked the way that they were supposed to. So we ended up going back to PET because it is, it's a rigid plastic. It is a, a really great plastic for circular economy. And we thought, how do we get our, get, get our hands on or get access to this blue box material? It was very easy. You call up the municipalities and you can buy it. So by bringing that material back in and producing our own recycling mater recycled material in Shelburne, we actually keep it as a, as a local circular economy. We know that the next generation of workers wants to work at companies that put sustainability front and center. Ice River was just awarded uh, as one of Canada's greenest employers by the Globe and Mail. What does this recognition say to that next generation of workers? I think it's, it's really exciting to get this award. Um, I would say that our existing team is, is very sustainably minded. So they, they are here for a good reason. They want to have an impact that's, that's positive and they want to start fixing things for future generations. So we encourage you know, newcomers come in and, and work for, with us. And if you have ideas, we want to take those ideas and run with them. So I think it's really exciting. When we think about what many businesses are focusing on today, culture is really core to those businesses, especially when it comes to uh, focusing on sustainability as one example. How do you really uh, push that culture of sustainability among your team and out into the public? So if you go beyond the bottle, I think one thing we did was right at the start when I took on this role, I thought, what is, what's a project that everybody touches throughout the entire organization? So one thing was paper paper consumption. Everybody wants to print their emails. And now we don't, right? We've gotten away from that. We can, we can reduce our paper consumption. And then once we hit that mark, we worked on lights out, no idling, carpooling, um, really thinking about more than just what we do at work, but also what we do at home. Beyond that, we have zero waste to landfill programs. So all of our water plants and our offices are zero waste to landfill. We are Operation Clean Sweep certified, which means we want to keep plastics in our facilities, not in the environment. So there's lots of other programs that are in place throughout Ice River at, at each department that help us keep sustainability front and center. What about the industry as a whole? How does Ice River make an impact to be a leader in this industry? The really nice thing about sustainability is we don't really have proprietary information necessarily. We like to share. So if you get a group of sustainability directors in a room, we won't shut up. <laughs> we will talk and talk. Um, so it's really about sharing knowledge so that we can move the entire industry ahead together faster than we would if we were on our own. And that is, it's, it's the most fun conversation to be a part of because we are working towards, you know, this is a really serious issue. We need to start thinking about our consumption and, and the way we produce our products. And if the manufacturing industry can make headwinds, 
and change the way we do things, that has a very huge impact on our environment. It's exciting to see organizations like the Canada Plastics Pact come together. That's over 100 different organizations coming together to work on plastics management and really to step past the, the thought of, I want to get ahead of the market. I want to have this piece to myself and really start sharing that knowledge with everybody. Looking forward, how does Ice River continue to innovate? Um, the blue box actually led us to a ton of in innovation because when we buy that bale of material through the blue box, we don't just receive the good bottles that we want to turn into new bottles. We receive things like peanut butter jars, clamshells, um, that you know the things that you get your lettuce and your strawberries in. That material we actually encouraged. So when we first started, we weren't sure what to do with it. We worked hard and determined a way that we could use that PET the same way we use a bottle. So we reached out to all of the material recovery facilities in Ontario, which is where your blue box material goes, and told them, please start including that material and encourage consumers to recycle that. That led to, at this point, about 40% of the bales we receive are full of that clamshell material, and that keeps it out of landfill. Beyond that, we have the bottle cap. We encourage everybody to please recycle their bottle with the bottle cap on so that we can turn it into outdoor furniture of all things. So we have a facility in Stratford, Ontario that takes that material, which is actually HDPE plastic and turns it into long lasting outdoor furniture. We have the flexible film on the outside of our case. When we were trying to get our supplier to put recycled content in, we were told that was impossible. So we decided to invest in the technology ourselves and bring it home to Ontario. And we now manufacture our own film with 30% recycled content in it with a goal of as high as we can possibly go. And I think that really helps the Ontario market because we want to be able to collect that material from consumers. We know there's flexible plastic out there that a lot of people aren't sure what to do with. So how do we create a market for it so that we can turn that into circular thinking as well? We have our green bottle. It's green because the plastic we get is green and we weren't sure what to do with it. Um, Jamie, the owner of the company, my dad, said, let's just turn our product green. So Ice River Green Bottle is green because we get green plastic and we don't want to see that go to landfill. And then it just goes on from there. It's, it's really never ending. Um, we are now at a point where we have other organizations reaching out to us and asking for input and investment in their new thought and their, their new idea. And I think that just drives sustainability ahead. So I look forward to where the organization's going and I don't think there will be a, you know, a boring day in my future.